In March of 2020, teachers were thrown into the digital world. And since then, many educators have really started to explore what education in the digital realm could really look like. Now, this even includes digital planning. So Michelle from Pocketful of Primary and I have actually been working with digital planners for quite some time now. And we are so thrilled to be able to announce to you all that we have officially launched our very first top digital planner. This includes everything that we talk about over on our podcast, Teaching to the Top. And we are so thrilled to be able to provide you guys with the tools and resources to make sure that you are organized and productive every single day. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with all of you everything from how to pick the right tablet planner to quick tips to be able to make the most of your digital planner. Now, if you're interested in the Google Slides format, go over to Michelle's channel, Pocket Full of Primary, and check out her video because she's talking all about Google Slides. And in this video, I'm talking all about the tablet format. Before we jump on in, I wanna to talk to you guys about the variations that we have over on Teaching on the Double. This is gonna be where you go to purchase your digital planner. So we have a number of different, different options available for all of you. And I told you guys that I'm talking about the tablet version, so that's all I'm talking about here. So with the tablet, there are two different year formats that you're gonna be able to select from. You have the J July through June for 2020 through 2021. And so that's more for our US teachers out there. And so if you are someone who is international and you teach from a January to a December format, we do have a 2021 format for January 2021 all the way to December 2021. So you really have to be mindful of which one you're gonna be selecting for your specific school year. From that, we also have two different orientation types. Now, when I say orientation, I mean the orientation of your iPad. If you're someone who likes to hold your iPad more landscape style, you're gonna want to buy the planner that's, that's in landscape. If you are someone like me who likes to hold their iPad in a portrait style, because my iPad tends to be really, really big and it just works better for me, then you're gonna to wanna to select the portrait format. This is not pertaining to the weekly pages. This is just to how you like to hold your iPad so it fits your entire screen and you're not having to zoom in and out. So we have a lot of different options for you to be able to select from. Just make sure that you're reading all of the fine print and ensuring that you're selecting the right one for you. And I recommend trying out the chat bot over on teachingonthedouble.com that's located on the bottom left of your screen. That will really help you to identify the exact planner and it'll take you right there so that there's no complications or confusion when you're selecting and purchasing your digital planner for this year. Now, once you purchase your planner over on teachingonthedouble.com, this is the exact screen that's going to pop up. Now, if you accidentally close out of this screen before downloading the planner, no worries, you will be sent a link through your email so that you can download it from there. But let's go ahead and just show you exactly how to download it to your PDF annotation app. Now, here is my thank you for order confirmation and there is going to say download my files. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on download and it's going to ask me to, if I wanna download it, of course, I want my planner, duh. And then I'm going to hit on the little arrow at the very top. Um, this is just on an Apple device. If you're doing this on an Android or Windows, it may look a little bit different. So I've now clicked on it and it says that my download is ready. So when I click on it once again, it's going to open up my planner. On the top right hand corner, there's a box with an arrow. I'm gonna click that box with an arrow and this is where I'm going to send it to my PDF annotation app. Now. I'm gonna tell you guys, we are good notes people through and through. We have Good Notes 5. This is what Michelle and I have used for the past two or three years. And as much as we wanna provide support for all of the other annotation apps that are out there, we are only gonna offer support for Good Notes 5 and XODO. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like in Good Notes 5. So I'm gonna copy mine to Good Notes. 
and it's going to ask me to import it. I'm going to import as a new uh, document, but I'm going to change my location. So here, I'm just going to put into, actually, I'm just going to leave it in that location, documents. That's where I'm going to leave it. And now it's downloaded to GoodNotes. And I know that because I can see the bars for GoodNotes. Everything has popped up so that I can start annotating right away. Now, if you don't see this page and you exit out of it and you cannot find the link in your email, no worries because you can always go back to the store. So I'm going to hit continue shopping and it takes me right back to the teaching on the double store. If I scroll all the way to the very bottom, there is a sign in button next to shopping bag. So I'm going to hit the sign in button and it's going to prompt me to enter my email. This is the email that you used to purchase your product. So I'm going to hit the lettered classroom. If I can spell classroom correctly <laughs> at gmail.com. That's not a dot. Okay. And then it's going to tell me to check my mail. I'm going to go check my mail. <laughs> so I've checked my email and there was a link for me to be able to sign in. So it automatically took me back to the page and up at the top it says, welcome the lettered classroom at Gmail. Well, thank you teaching on the double. And it says that I am now signed in and I can go to my accounts page. So I'm gonna go to my account at the bottom and there you're gonna see your purchases. So this is where you can download it. If you don't download it right away, or you cannot find the email uh, after you purchase it. Okay, so now I have my planner into GoodNotes and I'm ready to start using it. But before we do that, let's go over and talk about all the goodies that are inside of this planner. So the first thing you're gonna notice is the cover. Um, and there's really no buttons on the cover and in order for you to kind of start to see all the juicy stuff on side, you have to swipe it. So once you swipe, you're going to get to the home page. This is gonna be where you get to all of your reference pages, all of the wonderful templates that can help you stay organized and be productive. So let's go through each of these buttons and discuss what it is and how you could possibly begin using it. So at the very top where it says home references, on the opposite side, this is what we call your top bar. And this top bar is going to be located on every single page in the planner. So let's go back to that very front. So in order to use this planner, if you're in GoodNotes 5, you have to have your read mode only on. So right now, I'm actually in write mode. And the way that you know this is that in the top bar, you're gonna notice that I have the pen, I have an eraser tool, a highlighter tool, shape tool, all of the colors are up there and I can start writing right away. So to go to read only mode on the upper, right hand corner, there's like a pen and it has a line through it and it's right next to a little page with a plus sign. So this little pen, when I click on it, it takes away the writing bar. And so once that writing bar has disappeared, this now allows me to use the links freely within this page. So let me show you. So here I'm going to go ahead and just hit um, the light bulb and it takes me to the idea tracker. Let me go back to that home page by hitting the little house and let me show you what happens when I am in write mode. So I'm in write mode because I have all of my toolbars up at the very top for me to be able to use. And let's say I'm in write mode. I have my pen on. When I click, the only thing that happens are little bitty dots <laughs> because I'm in writing. So you have to make sure that your planner is in read mode only in order to use the links. So let's talk about all of the links on the top bar. The first thing that you're going to see is the very beautiful, beautifully designed Teaching on the Double logo. <laughs> And this Teaching on the Double logo is only featured on the home page. It's not necessarily featured on all the other pages. Um, but if you wanted to be able to go and listen to the wonderful podcast that we have that comes out every Thursday morning, you can actually reach those podcast episodes here on our webpage, and it'll take you to an external link. I'm actually not going to click the link. We're going to say no to that. But if you wanted to go and listen to our podcast, this is one way for you to be able to do it. 
Uh, the next one is going to be the little home, and this will take you to this front page. So anywhere in the planner, if you wanted to be able to reach this reference page to have access to any of the templates in it, you would go to the home button first. The third button is a little light bulb. And so if I click on that, it's gonna take me to an idea tracker. Guys, it's exactly what it is. It's a place for you to track all of your wonderful ideas. I feel like as teachers, we have so many different things that we're like, ooh, this is great, I really wanna do this, or ooh, I like this, and I really wanna try to implement it. But half the time we either forget, or it's in so many different places, and we just don't keep track of it. So one way to do that is to go ahead and place it here and keep track of it. The next one, and I'm going to go back to my home just to show you guys that it takes me back home, is a little circle with a checklet, with a check mark. When I click on that, it takes me to a task tracker. Now, this is something that Michelle and I talk about over and over and over again, about having a brain dump and really fleshing out all of the things that you have to accomplish and then organizing that information because once you have it out all it does is overwhelm you so one way to do it is to use the eisenhower matrix which is located on the right and so this is where you start to classify if something is important not important urgent or not urgent or then you can decide to take that information and organize it into do you have to do this in, within the month? Do you have to do this within the week? Or is this something that you have to do as a daily task? And so that allows you just to be able to prioritize your tasks and be able to get those done uh, when they need to be done. So the next one is a little page and it doesn't have anything on it. Guess what? It's a page with absolutely nothing on it. Now, these are really nice because you can actually make copies of these and insert them anywhere in the planner, but we'll get to that a little bit later on in the video. So right now we're just talking about the reference pages. Um, the next one is just lined paper. We also have grid paper. And then finally, which is my favorite, the dot paper. I just love dot paper. It just is very faint. It's not too in your face um, and it allows me to write neatly. <laughs> so it's my personal favorite. The next one that you're gonna see is a little circle, but it almost looks like it's folded over and it's white. Um, this is actually where you're gonna place all of your planning stickers. Now, here's my little plug for you guys. If you're really into planning stickers like we are, we got you. If you sign up for our newsletter following the link that's down in the description box, um, you will actually receive a newsletter once a month and it'll have some freebies in there. And so you can take those freebies and plot them right here on this planning, planning stickers page um, and then use them throughout the year. The next six colors that you see that are pink, orange, yellow, green, all of the beautiful colors, these are actually what we call tabs. And so these tabs would be almost like in a binder, how you would have the colorful tabs and you could put different information behind it. That's what this is for. So if you wanna have some sort of information that you wanna keep track of and you wanna take some of the templates that we've given you and organize them all together, this is a great place for you to do that. We've given you a little spot to be able to add a title there and then you can add information, you can add different images, whatever you want it to be, that is what this is for. Now let's go back to the home page. And in this home page, we I mentioned all of these different little reference pages, and these are juicy. They are so chock full of great ways to be able to organize your information. So we're gonna go through each of them. So the first one that you're gonna see is special dates. Well, it's special dates. You can have it be whatever you want, putting birthdays, anniversaries, whatever it is that's a special date for you that you need to remember, this is a great place for you to put it. The next one that you're gonna see is a class schedule. Now, I feel like my class schedule has been all over the place this year just because things are not running the same way that it used to. So this is a really good place for you to put your class schedule. So you have two different options um, and we wanted to be able to accommodate all different types of classrooms. So at the top, you have a Monday through Friday, so you can list your class schedule there or you have a schedule one, two, three, and four. I know for sure that Michelle has like three different schedules that happen in the week. So I know she's using this for sure to keep track of all of the different schedules and the days and to make sure that she's staying on top and doesn't forget anything. 
going back to the home page, um, the next one is account information. This is one that I feel like I really have to keep track of. There are so many different accounts that we have with passwords or special little number reference numbers, and this is a great place for you to keep track of all of that information there. Then we have the student information. And with student information on this page, keep in mind that there are some additional pages behind it. So we're gonna kind of start doing some swiping so that you can see all of the different student information pages that we have. The first one is your generic. It's the, what's the contact information? What are the parents or guardians information? Phone number, addresses, email, all of that is gonna go here. And you're actually able to fit six kids on one page. So you're not having to duplicate and have one for each individual child. But if we swipe it, the next one that we have is gonna be for medical information. Now I know for sure that I have a lot of different allergies and medical needs that are happening in my classroom. So it's really important that I keep track of that here. So you can have your student and then you can have the medical information and I have a really quick tip that I'm gonna throw in a little extra early here. You can actually print these pages individually and you can put them inside of your sub binder so that everyone who comes into your classroom has access to this information. The last page that we have is going to be special education. So if you are somebody who has an IEP or they have a 504 or a GIEP, which is very special, I think, for my state. So I'm curious, do you have GIEPs where you are? Um, this is a great place to be able to put all that information from case manager to important information to the accommodations and modifications that you need to pr be providing that learner. All of that can go here. So moving on, let's go back to the home page. And now we're gonna click on transportation information. Now transportation has two different pages along with it. So we have the morning transportation. So how are they coming to you in the mornings? And then more importantly, in my opinion, is the afternoon information. And this is how your students are going home. You can add text or you can handwrite next to the bus so you can keep track of the bus numbers. And then we have everything from car riders and walkers to after school care and activities in case your students are staying for activities. Going back to the home page, now let's look at the communication log. This is a really nice way to keep track of how you're communicating with your families. So you can make one of these a copy for each one of your students, and then you can write down the guardian how you had that form of contact and what was the reason and any notes so that you can keep track of it. It's always really nice to be able to cover your butt in the long run, so I highly recommend filling this out as you're making contact with families throughout the year. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. Then we have meetings and PD. And with meetings and PD, this is just a place for you to be to keep track of all of your meeting dates. I know that in Alabama, I actually had to keep track of all my dates and I had to submit those dates at the end of the year. Uh, here in Pennsylvania, I, didn't, I don't have to do that. So it is really nice to be able to keep track of it and have it as a reference. So you fill this out at the beginning of the year and then every month when you go to do your planning, take a look at the reference page and then fill it in for the month. The next page that we have right after that is going to be the resources and notes. Um, this is a great place that if you would like to keep track of your notes and you want to have reminders of anything, you can keep track of all of your meeting notes here and in a safe place. It's like an all-in-one package when you think about it. It's really nice. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. Ooh, this one's my favorite, guys. It's project planning. So I love project planning and Michelle and I talk about it over and over again over on our podcast, Teaching to the Top. And with project planning, it's really getting you to think about a big project and really dissecting it and pulling out all of the different individual tasks. When we, when we pull out all of those tasks and we identify when they need to be completed by, it takes this big project and it makes it feel less overwhelming. So this is one that I love to use for different parties. I use it for big projects that I'm planning with my students, um, lesson plans that I really want to dissect and just kind of pull apart and how do I want to accomplish them. Um, or if I have projects at home, I know that we've been doing a lot of home renovation here. And so it's really nice to be able to kind of pull things apart and identify like what are all of the little steps that we need to be taken on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, guys, so let's go back 
to the home page. Then we have a student grade book. It's exactly what it is. It's a grade book. <laughs> so you can put all of the assignments at the very top and your students on the left hand side. Now, I know we tried our best to be able to fit in uh, as many as we could, but if you still need more, no worries. We got you. This planner, you could just make a copy of the page. I'll show you how to do that later and have additional um, pages behind it so that you can keep track of all of your students. So when we go back to the home page, then I have student checklist. Now this can be different from your grade book. Sometimes we don't want to uh, combine the grade book and the checklist just because it, all the information starts to blur together, I feel like after a while. And so one of the things that um, we want to do is have a checklist that allows us to keep track of different things that kids need to turn in. Permission slips are really important. Those beginning of the year papers are always really important. Um, newsletters, homework, anything like that, that's not necessarily a grade, but you want to keep track of when they're turning it in, you can place that here. Going back to the home page, um, we have the great, the greatest of all greatest checklist. This is totally bad grammar, guys, but it was the best checklist that you will ever, ever have in a planner. So the first one is the beginning of the year checklist. And guys, we've already gone ahead and we've pre-filled this for you to be able to have like a starting point for the beginning of the year. We know that there are certain times of the year where things get really, really overwhelming and we don't want you to feel overwhelmed. So we've added some of the items in here that are just general items for everyone. Um, and then we've also had some space here that allows you to be able to insert things to make it a little bit more customizable. When I go back, I we also have a field trip checklist. Um, so if you're going on a field trip, which I have to be honest, guys, this was one that I needed to insert a little while ago because it was my first time ever planning a field trip on my own from beginning to end. And so I was very overwhelmed. I didn't really have a place to start. And I told myself never again am I going to experience that ever. So we created a field trip checklist to really help guide you and being able to implement a field trip. Not that we're going on one this year probably, but next year guys, next year we will definitely go on one. Going back to the home page, we have the conference checklist, which is also another one that's really important and making sure that you're communicating things effectively and in a timely manner with your parents. You want to just seem like you're on it. You don't want to give parents another reason to feel like, you know, things are the balls being dropped or you're not on top of your game. This is a great way to kind of stay on top of it all. So we have everything from scheduling to materials and setup and follow up, everything you could possibly imagine, and also a place to be able to track when you're meeting with parents and what time so that you have it all in one spot. Going back to that home page, we have a party planning checklist, which are super fun. Um, and these are really great to be able to make sure that you're organizing all of the different things. So one month prior, three weeks, one week, and the day before the party. Um, and again, we wanted to be able to provide you with a starting point, but we didn't want to kind of close it all the way in. So you have some area to be able to customize it and make it your own um, and to be able to fit your individual needs. So the next one we have is the end of the year checklist. And now this is another one that I pull out every single year because it is so important. There are so many different things happening at the end of the year and it is incredibly stressful. With this checklist, it helps to reduce that stress. So you have an, an idea of here are all of the different things that I really need to focus on to make sure that I have it done before I leave the last day of school. Going back, um, we also gave you a blank checklist. So let's say you have something individually, something that's very specific to your school, your needs that you want to create a checklist for. This is the place where you're able to create that checklist. So when I go back, guys, we're almost there. We're getting closer. The yearly planning page is going to be exactly as it sounds. It's a place for you to be able to plan out. Here are the things that you're going to do for the year. I really like to use this for units. And so I plan out here are the units that I'm going to focus on for each month so that that way, when I have an idea of my planning and what do I want to accomplish in that month, I have a really good progression and a timeline. So I'm not trying to cram so many things in at the very end of the year. Going back to that home page, we have first quarter planning. Now, 
First quarter planning typically refers to the first three months in a year, so January, February, March. Now, businesses will use it based on the year or the month that they open is their first month. So you can kind of view this as first quarter uh, for your school year. So if you started in August, your first quarter would be August, September, October. Um, if you started in September, your first quarter would be September, October, November. So you can really kind of adjust it to fit your needs, but I really like this because because again, it really helps me to kind of flesh out what are the things that I want to accomplish within this first quarter. It helps me identify my tasks. It helps me to have those important dates and anything that I feel like those big projects that I really want to tackle within those three months. So going back to my home page there, I'm going to go into the second quarter is the same and I'm just going to go ahead and swipe because they should be right next to each other. Third quarter is the exact same and so is the fourth quarter. But we wanted to be able to give this like easy access so you didn't have to go to the first quarter and do a bunch of swiping. So each of them has their own individual buttons. We have monthly planning, which is also another great way to be able to create a focus, have your big assignments or tasks that you want to be able to accomplish. Maybe you do have some big assessments that you're gonna be giving your students and you wanna write those down so you don't forget that. This is a great place to be able to do that. Um, the other thing that I wanna show you is that in this home here, we also have the weekly planning. Now, I personally really like the weekly planning. Now, I don't use it to where I plan out every single week. Let me tell you how I use this. So for me, I operate on a six cycle day rotation. Um, some of us have things that we do maybe a certain day of the week. So um, let me give you some examples. On Monday, I might plan my morning meetings. On Tuesday, I will plan my ELA lessons. Um, but I also have certain things that are happening during certain cycle days. Like on cycle day three, I have gifted that comes into my room. On cycle day five, I have certain kids who will go out to band, chorus, or orchestra. So I have certain things that are happening every single week that I need to be able to keep track of. So whether it's things that I want to try to accomplish because I'm trying to block schedule or if it's something that somebody's pushing in for or you know maybe my specials are changing every single day, this is a phenomenal page for you to be able to keep track of all of that different information. So you can obviously use it as a weekly planning. So if you want to go into it and really think about every single week and, and make those adjustments as you go, that's fine. You can totally do it that way. Or you can just have it as a, I just wanna keep track of here's the things that every single week I want to be able to accomplish. Or during my six cycle day rotation, here are the different changes that end up happening every single day. Um, really, it's any way that you choose to kind of view this information and utilize it. And what's great is that you can make it really fit your own individual needs. So going back to the home page, we're going to go into the daily planning. So with daily planning, I love this. Let's say you have um, an Act 80, which is an early dismissal for me, um, or you might have a snow day, which I'm curious. If we're really used to going virtual, does that mean we're not going to have snow days anymore? <laughs> I don't know but I gotta bring it back together. <laughs> so let's say you have a snow day and or a, a early or a late start because of snow and you have a totally different schedule change. Um, this is a great way that if you're just feeling incredibly busy and you need to really write down, here's my schedule for the day, here's what I wanna be able to accomplish, this page is great for it. So we give you the schedule off on the side and it's kind of broken down by 30 minute increments. You have the power list, which is something that Michelle and I talk about every single day. Building a power list is so important to making sure that you're moving forward in your goals. You have your focus for the day, a positive affirmation to put out into the universe so that you can have a really great start to your day. You can list gratitude. You can track water, which by the way, guys, I've been doing really well with. I'm super proud. It's the mask. It really makes me thirsty. Uh, you have a space to be able to put all of your to-dos and then finally a little area for notes. So a great page to use whether you want to do it daily or if you want to just use it during those days that you're feeling incredibly overwhelmed and you just need to really write out your whole schedule. Okay, going back to the home page, 
Let's talk about what else we have here. So at the bottom, you're gonna notice that there is every single month for the year of that this calendar is made for. So I told you guys that this is the 2020, 2021 landscape planner, okay? Now, if this was the 2021 planner, the months at the bottom would be January to December, but this is for um, more of a US traditional school year. So I have July to June, and what's really cool is if you're in that read only mode, which we are, I don't have any writing tools at the top of my iPad, you can actually click on that month and it'll take you there. So it'll take me to September. And so once I'm here, on the right hand side, you're gonna see the tabs. You'll notice that September is actually blacked out because that's the month that I'm currently in. If I wanted to move from there, I can go to December. I can go back to July. You know why I would wanna do that. Let's move forward, guys. Let's get out of 2020. Let's go to August and so on and so forth. So all of those are linked for you. I'm gonna go back to the home page because I wanna show you something else. In monthly planning, for instance, there are the months as well those months are also going to be linked for you. So let's say I wanna to go to November because I need to check some information there. It'll automatically take me to the November page. So what's nice is that wherever you're really gonna see any of those months, you're gonna be able to click on them. So now that we have totally talked about all of our reference pages, the really good juicy stuff, let's get into the stuff that you're gonna be using from day to day, right? These are gonna be your monthly and your weekly pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into September because that's the month that we're in right now um, or when I'm filming this video. So here is my September month view. Let's talk about what this looks like real fast. So obviously we are in a Sunday to a Saturday format. Um, and this is very different from the planner that I used to do in, by myself individually. Um, but this is more of your traditional format. So keep in mind when you're looking at these dates, it is a Sunday through Saturday format. On the right hand side, you're gonna notice that there is a spot for you to write notes. So anything that you really wanna kind of keep track of, maybe you have the big projects. I highly recommend looking at what projects you have going on, identifying maybe two to three big projects that you want to try to work on every single day and write those projects down here. And then below that notes page, you're gonna see the smaller months. Those are as well attached to a link. So I can go back to August if I wanted to, and then back to September just by using those smaller monthly items. On the left hand side of the monthly view, you're gonna see there's a week with a dash. So if you wanna keep track of your week for your school year, so right now, for instance, I'm in week four for my school year, um, these are actually linked. It allows you to be able to write or you can put a sticker number on top of it or you can just do a text box if you wanted on to above that line. Um, but those weeks, when you click on the week itself where it says week with the line, it'll take you to that physical week. So that way you're not having to start at the month and continue doing a bunch of swiping to be able to get to where it is that you wanna go to. So I can click back on September. I'm gonna go down to um, this week over here that starts with the 27th. I'm gonna click on it and it's gonna take me right to that weekly view. So looking at this whole weekly page here, um, you're gonna notice that we are in a Monday through Friday. We don't have a Saturday and Sunday box. Now I'm gonna give you a solution to that in just a moment, but within this weekly box here, um, this is a vertical format. Now Michelle and I have both done videos where we show a little bit about how we plan using this planner so you can get some really good ideas on how to organize it because I know you don't necessarily have a place to put your subjects. So I would definitely recommend checking out those videos Videos, I will leave links down in the description box so that you can go and look at those. So at the top, I have a spot to be able to write my week number. So if I'm keeping track of it to match it to the monthly page, I can add that there. Now over on the right-hand side,
side, you're gonna notice there are two boxes. And these two boxes, you can really customize it to your needs. If you wanna keep track of copies or maybe weekly to-dos, or if you are somebody who really wants to have the Saturday and Sunday on your weekly pages using the text box or your handwriting, you can add Saturday to one box and Sunday to another. So really just customize it to fit your individual needs. Now let's get into the really, really fun part of this planner, and that's how to customize it to fit your needs. So one of the first things I wanna show you is specifically for GoodNotes. So again, it's gonna change depending on what PDF annotation app you are specifically using. We love, we love GoodNotes Vibe, so I highly recommend it. So now I'm gonna go out of read mode and I'm gonna go to write mode. So I'm gonna click on the little pin that has now a little circle lasso around it. So when I click on it, there's my writing toolbar. So let's say I want to have my specific subjects listed for each of my weekly pages. Here's how I would do that. So the first thing I could do is I could just take a text box and I'm just gonna click on the T for text box and then I'm gonna hit tap. And let's say I'm just gonna do math class. Wow, that is really big writing. I am going big or home. So I'm gonna go ahead and just double uh, click that there. I'm gonna hit the A button and I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller. <laughs> um, you can also change the background color, which is really cool here. So here I'm gonna click and let's do a really pretty green. How about that? I'm gonna go back to styling. I can change this to where I can make it in the middle. I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, whatever it is, you can really change it to fit the needs of your class. I'm gonna actually make it a little bit wider so it fits the entire width of the, uh, the vertical weekly day box. And that's gonna be one way that you can very easily customize it. So I can add math class, ELA class, block one, block two, whatever it is to make your needs, you can make it here. Another thing that you can do to customize and something that is really easy if you're wanting to go super quick, um, using your pen tool, I'm actually gonna change it to this blue and I'm gonna make mine a little bit thicker. What's cool is that you can tap on it a second time and you can change the width of how fat you want your, your pen to be. Um, and I'm gonna actually use the shape tool because I want a nice straight line and I'm just gonna follow the dots. It doesn't have to be necessarily super perfect, but once I do, it automatically creates this line for it. So once I have one here, I can use the lasso tool, which is like this, it's like a dotted line <laughs> with a circle, dotted circle. You guys following me there? Um, and I'm gonna make sure that I have text boxes selected. Okay, so you have to really make sure that you're selecting certain pieces. I'm gonna lasso that, and then I'm gonna click on it and hit copy. Whoops, I didn't do it fast enough. Copy, and then I'm gonna hold my pen down and hit paste. So now I can actually create uh, these borders using the shape tool and the text box tool to be able to differentiate between all of the classes that I have going on. So that's one way that you can add some customization to your specific planner. Let's go ahead and go to the home page. Now remember, if I wanna use the links, I need to go out of write, on, write mode and go to read only mode. So now my writing toolbar is gone. I'm gonna click on the little home to head me back to the home button. And let's say I really wanna make some copies of some pages, okay? And I wanna customize this planner a little bit more. So I told you guys dotted, dotted paper is my favorite. So we're gonna to go to, to the dotted paper, okay? Once I am here, I'm gonna actually make a copy of this page. Now this is super important, so I need you to stop. Have you stopped? Are you looking at me? Are you watching me? Are you really listening? This is really important. Do not, under any circumstance, do not delete any of the linked pages. If you make copies of pages and you delete the ones that you've copied, the, the pages that you've pasted in, that's fine. But the pages that the planner comes with, do not delete those pages. It will mess up the links and you don't want to do that because then you're going to have to start all over. Um, so please do not delete any of those linked pages. Okay, so let's go back to this. I wanna copy this dotted paper and I want to customize it and I wanna add a tab. I'm gonna use one of my colorful tabs here. 
So to copy this page, what I have to do is go to the um, upper left-hand corner. You're gonna notice a little waffle. It has like four little squares. So I'm gonna click on that waffle here and you're gonna notice that uh, slide 101 has a blue box around that page. And that means that that's the page that I'm currently on. Now it's taking some time because the planner is big, so it takes a minute to load. Um, so that one, I'm gonna go ahead and hit select and I'm gonna hit the little check mark there. Once I do that, then at the very top of that, I can hit copy. So I'm gonna click on that copy. It says, yep, you've copied it, I'm good to go. So I'm gonna hit done and close out of it. Now, I told you I wanna use the tabs. So let's go to one of the tabs. I'm gonna pick purple because purple is teaching in the double color. So I'm gonna make sure I'm in read only mode. I'm gonna click on the purple button and it takes me directly there. Now I'm going to add the page behind this purple tab. So what I do is I'm going to hit the little paper at the top right hand corner with the plus in the middle of it. So once I click that, then it's going to say paste page. Do you see where it says paste page? It's underneath those different papers that it has. So I'm going to click paste page and it automatically places it behind it. How cool is that? And then if I wanted to, that page, those links still work on it. So let me show you that one more time. I'm gonna go back to the purple. Remember, I pasted the page there. Now let's say I wanna go back to my home. I can still use the links that are on that page. It's pretty magical. <laughs> So now let's talk a little bit about something called bookmarks. And bookmarks are gonna be really important because as you start to really fill your planner with a bunch of information, you're gonna have specific things that you will want to reference easily and quickly, right? So one of the things that I think about is the 504 IEP information for my special education learners. This is something that I definitely have to use over and over again this year. I do have special ed learners in my classroom. So in order to make it easy, and I instead of having to click on student information and then moving and swiping to find the information, you can use bookmarks. And to do this at the very top of your bar, you're going to notice next to um, the little magnifying glass and your waffle, there is a little banner. And so that little banner there, when I click it, it turns red. And so this means that you are bookmarking the page, that this page is really important to you. So as you're in your planner, I'm going to kind of move out of here. Let me go back to my home button. So let's say I really want to get to that information quickly. So what I do is I'm gonna click on the little waffle again, and you're gonna notice that typically you would go to the thumbnails page. So in thumbnails, this is where you view all of the pages in the planner. Well, in the middle, there's thumbnails, favorites, and outlines. I'm gonna click on favorites, and this is gonna be where you can find the information that you've bookmarked. So I can just tap on it and it'll take me directly there. So no more having to hit um, other, tabs and doing a little swipe feature there to be able to find the information. Now, if you're someone who is really into using planning stickers, uh, we got you. So I told you guys about us sending out a little planner sticker goodie every single month, and I wanna show you how to import those into your planner. So when you receive an email, it's gonna prompt you to download the stickers. Now, if you're using an iPad, the stickers are gonna go to something that's called your files. Files is just, it looks like a little blue folder and you can just kind of swipe down and look for that information. But I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna click on my files, which is down at the bottom. Um, and here you're gonna notice that I have a bunch of different things here. So one of the things um, is my top digital sticker freebie. So this was the first one that we ever released and you're gonna notice it says zip on the file and that's okay, don't stress out. So when I open this, it's gonna say preview content. So when I click on preview content, you're gonna notice some of the stickers. So we sent out a morning routine, a checklist sticker. Ooh, you have like little box checklist sticker. You have a to-do list all of these different things that you can use inside of your planner. So in order to be able to import these into your planner, I'm gonna do the power list because that's my favorite. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna click on my little box at the top with the little arrow. And I'm just gonna hit copy. 
Okay, I just wanna hit copy. If you wanna save it to your camera roll, roll, you're more than welcome to do that, but this is probably one of the easier ways. You hit copy, and I'm gonna go back to my planner here. Now remember, at the top bar, you can actually click on the little white sticker, and here in your planner stickers is where you're gonna house everything. So I'm gonna hold my finger down and hit paste there's the planning sticker. Now I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. Um, and for some reason, whenever I feel like I do this, it always comes out just a little bit crooked. And if it does, here's my tip. Um, you can hold your pen down and then hit edit, and then this one will come up. And this one will typically allow you to adjust it a little bit better. So now I have my uh, power list here, and I'm gonna put it up in the corner. And let's say I wanna use it for this week. So I'm going to lasso it with this lasso tool that's here. And I have my images selected, so I'm good to go. So if you find that you're lassoing and you're like, but it's not lassoing, just make sure that you have all of these items selected for what you're trying to lasso. So I have images lassoed, I'm gonna lasso it, I'm gonna tap it, and I'm gonna hit copy, okay? Once I do that, I'm gonna to go to my month. So let's go to September. And then I'm gonna go to this week. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hold my finger down and hit paste. So there it is again, and I can adjust it just a little bit more to be able to fit the planner perfectly. And then I can place it right there in the week. So let's jump into a couple of quick tips. So the first quick tip is probably the one that I love the most, and that is really, really important for me. And that is to, if you are an Apple user, to have it synced to iCloud. And so when you have your information synced to iCloud and GoodNotes is synced to iCloud or Notability, I know also does this as well, you can access your planner from any of your other Apple devices. So for instance, on my phone, I am able to pull up my planner if I don't have my iPad with me because all of the information is synced. I can view my planner here here on my phone, make changes, and the changes will automatically go to my iPad when once I'm connected to some form of you know, Wi-Fi. Um, so that is one tip that has completely changed my life. I also have good notes available on my laptop. So if I'm working on my laptop and I'm doing some planning, I'm able to just use the typing tool and I'm able to type my plans uh, for the week a little bit quicker than what I would on my iPad. So it's a really great feature and I highly re recommend uh, connecting it to iCloud. The next one that I have for you is one that's gonna make things a little bit easier for you to write. Um, if you're somebody like me and you're very particular about your writing, and that's the little magnifying tool. So next to the pen, there's a little A with a box. And when I click that A with the box, it pulls up a blue box and then at the bottom, you're gonna see that that area has been magnified. And so all it does is it allows me to kind of see, and I can adjust my blue box by the way as well, um, but it allows me to see that area where I am going to be writing, but then have it magnified so I'm not constantly, you know, zooming in and out of my planner. So now I can write and see my full this is cool. So once I start kind of getting to the edge of that blue box, you're gonna notice that I have like almost a filter, right? So it just kind of looks like it's shaded in blue. Well, I can then take my writing and move to where I see that last letter and it will continue moving for me. Um, if I don't want that, I can just move the blue box freely and it'll allow me to continue adjusting it there. So those are two really easy tips that you can use um, for this planner and specifically for good notes. Keep in mind that if you're someone who really likes to have access to links uh, for different lesson planning materials, GoodNotes does not have a feature that allows you to put links into your planner. So if that is something that is like, nope, that is, I absolutely have to have it, I do recommend looking into Notability as your PDF annotation app. Now, I know we haven't really discussed a lot about my Android users out there, 
we love you, we are not forgetting about you, I just am more of an Apple person. But I do highly recommend looking into Exodeo. I know Exodeo is a great application to use for Android um, or for any tablet, and it also connects to your computer as well. So you can use it in both areas. So check out Exodeo if you are an Android or Windows user. Now, some of you are probably looking at this planner and you're saying, wow, Bridget, I can't believe you just let the word hang over there like that. Let me give you one last quick tip. So if I was to zoom in here, and I am incredibly particular about the way that my words look and making sure that I have enough space. If you're somebody like me and you don't really judge how much space you have to write, using that lasso tool, I can lasso one word, letter, a part of the letter. It's so crazy how, how particular you can get with this. And well, there you go. I just did it myself. I don't have my handwriting tool on. <laughs> so now you just see how I messed up there. But I'm gonna lasso my planner now that I have the handwriting function on and I can move it to fit it anywhere within my planner so it looks exactly the way I want it to look. So thank you guys so much for checking out this planner. Um, I sincerely appreciate you following along in this video. And I do wanna remind you all that if you are somebody who, while after you saw this video and you were like, man, I don't know if the tablet is for me, I think I've always been a Google person, go and check out Michelle's video. She's talking all about the Google Slides format um, and showing you some quick tips and some ways to use it and all of the different features there so that you feel completely comfortable with both of these at the end of the day. Uh, for those of you who are my veteran digital planning people and you have been around the block with digital planning, definitely leave some comments down below with maybe some quick tips, some ways that you use it. Um, I know that so many other people will really appreciate it, especially as many more teachers start to explore what digital planning could look like and how we can use these planners to help plan our lessons overall. So thank you all so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out Michelle's video over on Pocketful of Primary, and I will see you all next time. Bye!